Today, we are with Professor Rajat Mittal from IIT Kanpur. He works in the field of theoretical computer science. Thank you, sir, for taking out time for this interview. Thank you very much for inviting me. <laughs> so, we'll start with the first question. Sure. So, can you please describe a bit about your field of expertise? Sure. So, uh, uh, first, already thanks because you did half the work for me. So, yes, I, I work in theoretical computer science. And uh, just to describe what theoretical computer science is, uh, in, in some sense, it's very important for us to solve problems using computers, right? That is why we use computers. It solves problems for us. You want to do a reservation, you want to search something on Google, you want to talk to your friends. And the question is, can these problems be solved fast by using a computer? And my field is to actually see how fast can we solve problems on a computer. It has two parts come up with algorithms, to come up with strategies which can solve a problem really fast. On the other hand, we are also interested in proving that some problems are really hard to solve on a computer. So we want to also tell you that some problems can be solved fast and we also want to prove our limits on the efficiency of a computer. And a mixture of these is my field of expertise. To specifically say, actually I look at this uh, complexity, this uh, hardness of problems in the field of quantum computers. Uh, I would uh, recommend uh, all of you to go to internet now and see what a quantum computer is. In a nutshell, it's a computer which is based on different physical principles and we believe that it can solve problems faster. So my expertise is, or in some sense my interest area is where I see uh, how fast a problem can be solved on a quantum computer as compared to a classic Thank you for that answer. So the next question is, uh, what are some of the major challenges in your field that are like still unsolved? Yeah, I guess uh, a lot of them. I guess <laughs> almost everything which I said uh, uh, remains unsolved in the sense that uh, we are very interested in finding out the difference between a quantum computer and a classic computer. There are a host of problems for which we know that we have a good quantum computing solution. But there are a lot of problems about which we have no idea. Does the quantum computer solve them faster than classical computer? Or there is no difference between the performance of a quantum computer and a classical computer. So this comparison is a very interesting problem in itself. So for various problems, people have worked a lot in classical computers in putting different problems in different classes. Like this problem is hard, this problem is very hard, this problem is hard compared to that problem. And these kind of interactions we want to prove in the case of quantum computer also. So there has been a lot of work. We have figured out some problems for which quantum computer is better. For some problems quantum computer we believe that it is not better. But for a host of other problems this question is still open. I would also like to say a very recent, uh, a very interesting uh, problem which has been worked on in, in the last few years, which is the problem of quantum PCP. So to describe it, uh, we want to also prove that a problem is hard to solve even approximately. In other words, if you want to give a solution, an approximate solution to a problem, even that you cannot do using a computer. For a classical computer, there is a very beautiful theory called PCP, where we prove hardness of approximating a problem. We want to port that theory to quantum computers also. So we want to prove that for some problems, it is even hard to approximate a quantum computer. So that has been a really challenging problem for the last few years in our field. It's a good example of the same problem. So could you please brief us about some of the problems that you have worked on? Yeah, so uh, one of the problems which I really liked uh, was this problem of quantum query complexity. So uh, I talked to you about uh, hardness of a problem, right? So the resource which we measure uh, by how hard a problem is, is actually time. How much time do we take to solve a problem on a computer or on a quantum computer? It turns out that to bound the time required in the case of plus quantum computers is pretty hard. It is very hard to say that on a quantum computer you will need at least this much time to solve a problem. So we find substitutes. We instead say that instead of time, we will say that it will at least take this much resource. And that helps us in getting to know the time complexity or the amount of time taken by a problem on a quantum computer. 
So instead of time, we substitute by some other resource and say that this resource will be required, lot of this resource will be required for solving the problem. One of this resource in the case of quantum is called a query and it's a very good approximation of time complexity. So we were able to characterize the query complexity of many functions. And I think this was very important because the characterization we came up with was in terms of classical uh, mathematics. So in some sense, it enabled us to make quantum algorithms without knowing much about the quantum computer itself. So it gave some mathematical construction using which you can make algorithms for quantum computers. So that was pretty nice. <laughs> so talking a bit general also, so what are the field perks of working in computer science or, or say specific to your field too? Uh, yeah, I guess a uh, lot of money. <laughs> As you know about computer science, it's, it's one of the hottest fields now. Uh, not just in terms of money, but in terms of exciting problems, in terms of application for the society, in terms of impacting the society. So I think this is one of the fields where you can actually impact the society very soon. So uh, most of you would be going to industries and would be, I guess, making these challenging, solving these challenging problems for, I guess, Facebook, Google, uh, a lot of these interesting companies, which your friends probably will see the next day. They will see that, okay, you now you have developed this application or changed something in Facebook, which they can do it the next day. So I think that's very, very exciting. So, and that's very satisfying because uh, uh, you solve hard problems and you impact the society around you with those hard problems. So I would say that is very good about uh, computer science in general. Specifically for my field, I think theoretical computer science, mostly the interest is about the curiosity of human beings. We want to figure out uh, how nature behaves around us. Mathematics, computer science is a great tool. So uh, the interest there is, or the reason why I'm in this field is that it gives me a lot of satisfaction to solve these problems. So uh, there are tough problems, you take two months, three months, six months, one year, six years to solve a problem. But when you solve these problems, it gives you a lot of intellectual satisfaction and happiness. So I, I, I would say that that's the biggest, biggest uh, thing for me, the happiness which I get by working in this field. Thank you. So what are some of the career options in your field? Uh, Broadly in computer science, there are a lot of career options. I don't have to extrapolate on them. Uh, a lot of companies around you, out of you can start your own company, and uh, it's it's just uh, the there are no limits, <laughs> infinite possibilities. But if you talk about theoretical computer science, mostly our aim is to do research in this field and to kind of spread that joy. Whatever we learn, we want to spread it to people. So teaching and research are the main things. Most of us want to go into academics, though our mathematical skills are good. So some of us will end up in finance jobs, programming and things like that. I would say that's, that's for my field. <laughs> Thank you. So some final suggestions or comments for like computer science beginners like myself also. So. Uh, I wouldn't say you're a beginner, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I, I would say that for all the people who are starting in computer science, I would say that uh, don't stop, don't let anything bound you. There are so many resources on internet, there are so many avenues where you can learn new things. And most importantly, don't think of computer science as just programming. Most of us do not work in programming. There are so many things for computer science, networks, how do computers interact with each other, talk to each other. There are databases, there is so much data, how do you keep it, how do you search, how do you do all the things which Google can do, right? A lot of machine learning, a lot of algorithms. So explore, learn new things, find out what you are interested in. And uh, I would say find out problems which keep you awake at night. And once you have those problems, uh, you will be motivated yourself work on these problems, do great things and be happy. So don't go and stop. <laughs> Thank you sir for taking your time for this interview. I'm very sure it would be helpful for all of us. Thank you very much.